All right, for the upteenth time, let's do this. I, I've tried so many times to record this. <laughs> okay, it's been a little while since the Deadbolt ransomware attacks on uh, Acetor and Naz uh, that I also was a victim of. And yes, I did lose some data. Thankfully, it wasn't really critical because I had all my backup, uh, had all my critical data backed up on Backblaze. So I had to restore from that in order to get that data back. Now it's time for me to go over uh, the few changes I've made to my network in order to, um, I would say, greatly decrease uh, being hacked again. Uh, I definitely will not completely eliminate it, but um, these uh, few changes I'm, I'm making and that we're going to go over will definitely decrease the, the risk of you actually getting hit with a ransomware attack in the future. Um, it costs me about five bucks a month for the changes I made. But if you're more tech savvy than me, it probably will cost you zero dollars. Let's get into it. Now you guys know from previous videos, I've been slowly upgrading my network, which is where uh, my new router from ASUS actually comes in. But more on that in a future video. Network upgrade that we'll be doing today is more of a software thing and not really a hardware thing. Now, in the comments of the previous video, uh, of course, there was a question of exactly what did I do or how do I prevent being uh, ever attacked with a ransomware or being completely secure? Uh, one of the things I said about that is, first off, uh, there is no such thing as 100% secure unless you're taking your NAS completely offline. Another way to at least get close to that is to use a VPN. So that's kind of what we're going to be setting up now, because what I want to do is I want to lock down my current network uh, by IP. So in other words, if the IP is not from this house, then it shouldn't be uh, accessing my network at all. Now, there is one uh, kind of a caveat to this is a, it's a bit of a twist to this that I need to work around, which is I currently use Xfinity and um Every now and again, when the power goes out or for whatever reason, when the modem is reset, uh, my IP could change. So in short, not only um, do I need to lock it down to the IP of this home, I also need to lock it down to a dedicated IP. So I needs to be uh, two IPs. One of those IPs can never change. Now, the only way for me to do that is for me to secure a dedicated IP. Now, depending on um, who you're with for internet, you might be able to actually call up your internet provider and actually uh, pay a little bit more a month to secure a dedicated IP directly from your internet service provider. So the, so the uh, IP that is given to your modem will never change. It'll be your dedicated IP. Um, that doesn't usually uh, work out exactly uh, straightforward, with, uh, at least here in the US or, or at least here where I am when it, with Xfinity. If you have a business plan, then they offer you a dedicated IP. If you don't, then you have to call up, call them up, and hopefully they will give it to you. However, there's another way um, to do that as well, and that is if your VPN service also offers dedicated IPs like the one I have, which is private internet access, that does offer a dedicated IP. Now, this is not a sponsored video for PIA. Um, PIA is just the VPN service that I choose and I've been using for years. However, if you do have PIA, let me go ahead and walk you through the few steps you need to secure a dedicated IP so we continue on with the video. All right, so when it, um, when it comes to PIA, all you got to do is hit the login button, log into your account, then over here uh, to the side, you're going to see dedicated IP. Click on dedicated IP. And now you can go to the simple steps of adding an IP here. I've already done so. So that's why it gives you um, the information of you know, how you paid and all that stuff. If you have no dedicated IP, you'll be able to go through the simple steps here of getting one. And like I said, it is only five bucks a month um, for your dedicated IP. This is the part where if you are tech savvy enough, you wouldn't need to actually use the PIA way of doing a dedicated IP. If you were able to secure a dedicated IP from your host, then maybe you can create your own VPN based off that dedicated IP. And that way that kind of bypasses needing to use a dedicated IP from any other VPN service. Therefore, your cost is going to be zero dollars a month. But you need to Google for that. Um, I am not uh, that tech savvy. So this is my easy way to do it for those of us who are uh, not as inclined or just don't don't know enough about networking to be able to create their own VPN. 
now that we have our our dedicated ip it's time to go ahead and hop over into the nas so i can show you exactly how you're going to be setting that up and all we need to do here is first let me close this you're going to log into your nas um your asator nas here we're going to click on settings and we're going to come down to the adm defender this is where we have our um network defender and our firewall now i'm going to have to uh blur out my actual ips here my two ips but um, you're pretty much going to get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. So in short, um, we have our uh, trusted list. Uh, we're going to click the add list. You're going to add in your home IP and add in your um, your dedicated IP, uh, whatever that might be. So we have your two IPs here. Um, this is only going to make it so that you don't get locked out for any failed login attempts. So this is not the actual block itself. This is just um, making these IPs trusted in terms of the uh, the network itself. And of course, you can use your blacklist and whitelist, but I prefer to just add in your IPs here for your trusted list. That way you don't really have to bother with this at all. And the reason you won't is because we're going to come over here to our firewall. And we're going to do something pretty aggressive. On our basic policy, we're going to click deny all connections. All of them deny them all and that means that we have to come down here and our first two ips that i have here and again i'm, I'm blurring out a lot of um client ip stuff here but um the first two ips i have here is the vpn with the dedicated ip which is from if you're using pia this will be the one from pia and then of course uh the our home ip whatever that is it will be added here as well so with just these two we're, we're already um pretty much achieve the goal where the only IPs that can access our NAS is the VPN and home. And then of course down here is all the other devices in the house that I wanna make sure can access the NAS um, because again, we're denying all connections. So just to make sure that I, I haven't messed up any sort of uh, things that these guys need to do, I add in all those network IPs as allowed IPs as well for each device in the home. That's it. In less than 30 minutes, you have done a simple thing as locking down your network uh, via via your IPs, again, a home IP and a trusted IP of some kind. And you have now uh, made it so that you are a lot more secure in the future from getting hit by ransomware attacks because they're going to need to go through a lot more hurdles in order to get into your network because your network is locked down. That's it. That's all I wanted. There are many other things you could do in order to, uh, to increase your security and, um, of course, uh, make it so that your your network is, you know, bulletproof as they as they say to whatever ransomware attacks. But just re just remember, just a, a quick reminder: we are decreasing the chances of our network being attacked by ransomware or any other uh, uh, kind of hacking. But we're not 100% preventing it. There is no way to do that unless you just pull the network cable from the back of your 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 network device, your NAS or what have you. There. And honestly, that just doesn't make any sense. Um, it's best to be more mindful. It's best to have backups for your three, two, one backup plan. Make sure that your NAS is not the only uh, place where your data is being stored and is being backed up to somewhere else that is off site um, that you can rely on when anything goes wrong here at home. That's it. I hope you guys uh, learned something. I hope this was, video was helpful for you. And if it was, get down in the comment box. Let me know your thoughts on it. And subscribe for more videos like this all the time. Make sure you hit that bell so you can know when I upload. See you guys again. You have a good one.